welcome back friends in this video tutorial I'm going to teach you how to calculate uh, the number of microorganisms that are present in your sample in your slide uh, using hemocytometer not only you can calculate microorganism but also it is being used for calculating the number of RBCs that are present in your blood number number of white blood cells that are present in your blood and everything but nowadays modern techniques are arising and people don't need to rely on these techniques but uh, this is a kind of old age uh, technique and usually for academic purposes that this is being used a lot so let's learn it so how to count number of cells or microscopic objects using hemocytometer a hemocytometer is nothing but a scale it's a it's actually a slide as you can see here this is this is actually the hemocytometer and how hemocytometer looks like so it's a very very thick glass uh, made uh, slide like structure which is having uh, very blurred uh, structures outside but very fine at the inner side and in this middle you can see two different squares now those two squares are filled with lines and grids right square lines and grids filled with different different length and parameter containing grid and boxes now those boxes are very much important those boxes are reference that will give you hint uh, to the number of cells that you are counting right so if we zoom into that particular area what we can see here is you can see simple uh, illustration of this slide is this one so simply two different squares in two opposite sides both of them working together now what we can do we can simply zoom it off and we get this particular structure now in each of the side let's talk about this particular side so each of the sides are same right so once you know one you know other so you, if you zoom into that what we will see it is actually made up with uh, three large square in three sides so it's nine squares completely three and three so nine sides are there nine squares are there now each of those nine squares I'm gonna tell you each of those nine squares are further divided into 16 squares like this each of those nine squares are divided into 16 squares right so we are beginning with one large square then it, they are divided into nine squares Now each of those squares are divided into 16 squares remember one large that is divided into nine from that nine each of that is divided into 16 squares now if you look at the middle one that is the most important one for calculating the number of bacteria and small objects that middle one is also distributed into 16 squares now if you zoom into one of that middle one of that middle one from one from that 16 it contains 25 squares so if you zoom into that and we'll get 25 such squares right so let's begin with it let me draw I think I need to draw otherwise there's no way to get it so actually here we go nine from this each of this nine we take this single one right or let's say take this middle one and what we'll get let's say this one what we'll get here is 16 like the best way to draw 16 is this way yeah so now we get this 16 now we take any any of it any of it and if you zoom into that it will give us 25 best way to do is this right so that's it 25 squares right so 9 16 each of these 25 but this last thing is mostly present in this middle one right so now let's talk about it now we can see in this picture that each of these large squares which is a square single square of this nine so one of the nine those those one of those nine squares each of them are having the length and breadth everything because as they are squares everything is one millimeter 
length breadth whatever because for the square everything is same so it's one millimeter each right so one millimeter for this section right now if you zoom into that each of the 16 the sides are one millimeter isn't it right the side is one millimeter because remember if we zoom into one of these boxes this side this side will be one millimeter we are just zooming into it so one millimeter in this whole contained right so each of those small squares that we are seeing here very small square that we are seeing here right how many uh, what is the length of the small squares here because because remember one millimeter out of 16 so one divided by 16 millimeter is going to be this length right this length one divided by 16 millimeter right and at the end what we know now if you zoom into each of this little square so ultimately this whole square is giving us one divided by 16 millimeter right so if we look at each of the smallest one the smallest square that is present in in this uh, hemocytometer they're consisting of 1 divided by 16 multiplied by 25 because remember each of them are 25 squares right so so ultimately the smallest square so let me write the smallest square is getting the scale of the length the length length of the smallest square which is small l is giving us 1 divided by 16 into 25 right this is the length millimeter right that we know now what we need to do we simply take this micrometer and the and the actual way to to know the number of microbes that we're dealing with we simply add our sample to each of the sides any of the side either this or this right so let's say we just put it we just put a cover slip and we slightly inject uh, our sample using micro micro pipette right and uh, actually it requires only 5 to 10 microliter of sample to simply load there not actually 5 actually 10 to 15 it'd be good to load there excess sample will overflow through these troughs that we can see here that has designed right so this is a very intelligent design in that sense so once we constructed that particular thing what we need to do we will simply uh, put it into the stage of microscope we just watch it now once we look at it it will look something like this you can see many different variety many microbes are we can see here now you can if you notice in this bit in this middle region you can see this red red box now this red box is telling us that one two three four five so you can see five and five twenty five squares so this is the this is this last square that I've drawn twenty five squares each now each of the small squares if you if you look at this each of the small squares and we need to calculate how many number of bacteria present in each of the small squares you can see in this first square there is only one the second one only two third one only three and this one only five so you can see in different squares there are different number of bacteria because that's the possibility right because we're simply adding it we are not doing anything else it's not required that they are distributed properly throughout the place it's not that possible right so for that reason the best way to to get the number of uh, calculations is that uh, usually we rely upon the five uh, segment theory that is you take a calculation of four corners and take the calculation of the middle one that's the best idea take the very values of four corners for example the first corner contains only two the second corner contains one this third corner three fourth corner two and the middle one five and we make an average of that which is five corners so divided by five we get the average of uh, 13 divided by five so 2.6 approximately the number of microbes that are present in each of the smallest square are 2.6 now once we get the number of microbes present in the smallest square which is in this case say 2.6 then what we need to do we need to calculate the amount of microbe that must be present in the actual sample because that's the question guys it's not done yet because you need to calculate the amount of micro present in 1 ml right in 1 ml how many microbes in 1 ml that's that's the actual question for you you know that 2.6 microbes average present in the smallest square so how to calculate for calculating that 
we need to ans get this scale because no from the beginning we know this this scaling and once we know this scaling one smallest square contains this number of scale and <coughs> and you know the most important thing once we are calculating that right that's the most important thing I'm going to tell you that in this case you can see here that this is the side view of the slide and we put our sample and we put this cover sleeve right so once you put everything in it is a kind of three dimensional space and it is not only having this length and breadth but al also it is having a height right so we need to calculate what is the amount or is the volume of sample we simply load there that's very very important guys right we need to know that what is the amount of sample we load there now we know that this length this length this height is always constant and this height is 0 0.1 millimeter we know that and that's the manufacturer designing in such a way that this height will always be 0.1 millimeter so we know that right so how to calculate uh, the volume so we know to calculate the volume here to calculate the volume it is simply length into breadth into uh, the height right so these three things we need to multiply all these things so the length here we know what is the length right and breadth we know the breadth through so the length breadth both of them are the same and we know the height now the height we also know so once we know these things once we know these things for a larger square we know everything for the larger square the length breadth is one millimeter so you know one millimeter into one millimeter into height is 0 0.1 millimeter so we get this answer of 0.1 right millimeter now we need to calculate this number in micrometers because that's kind of easy to memorize here so to, to convert this into micrometer we need to multiply it with 10 to the power 3 so we get the number 0 0.0001 right so that's the micrometer right so that's the volume the cubic micrometer that's what we get the idea right so that's that's the actual volume for this largest square right now once we know the volume for the largest square we know for this each of the square for 16 it will be divided by 16 right and for 25 it will be divided by 25 like this right sorry we need to so I just made it a mistake sorry it should be 100 in this case 1000 micrometer cube and what we need to do we need to simply to calculate it for the smaller squares like squares for 16 uh, and squares each for 25 we need to multiply it with 25 again so what we get here so we get this value for the smallest square right so simply we can write this value like this 16 into 25 into 10 to the power minus 3 right and that's how we can calculate the actual number of microorganisms because no once we calculate this you can get the idea right so once you get the number for example here you get 2.6 in each smallest square so simply multiply that with this factor and we get our answer right now suppose you need to calculate some certain uh, larger uh, things for example red blood cells you can easily calculate them in this uh, each square of the 16 so in that case you don't need to multiply this 25 because it is not required in that case you simply use 16 into 10 to the power minus 3 into the value and you get your answer that's how we can get our answer in all this case and in that case you need to calculate this thing in microliter or ml whatever so you know we know that we know the amount of uh, volume we added there so suppose you added 5 microliter so you get the answer you added it 5 so in 5 microliter that's the number so in 1 microliter what is going to be the number you can calculate it in this very easy stages right so this is the way to calculate the number of uh, microorganisms or the number of micro m micro molecules or whatever we are dealing with 
using hemocytometer. The key thing you need to understand is the length and breadth of each largest square that is 1 millimeter in each direction. So if you divide it in 16, it will be 1 by 16, it will divide it to 25. Of each of the 16, it will be 1 divided by 16 into 25. Once you get that value, everything will be easy guys. And that's it. Thank you.